Our topic today is we worship what we know. And I'm taking that from a statement Jesus made in John chapter 4. And he was speaking to the woman at the well. She was there drawing water. He came to her and asked her for a drink. He ended up telling her about living water and many more things about herself. And then she responded to his statements. And it was a discussion about spiritual things, I guess. You would call it that. So a couple questions before we read the passage. First of all, what do you think when someone says that they're a spiritual person? What, what do you think of? Here's another part of a question. What is the difference between being spiritual and having a relationship with God? Let me take you to John chapter 4. I'm going to start at verse 19, and we're going to go through verse 24. And the scripture reads, The woman said to him, Jesus, Sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem you will worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. And then their conversation continued. When you talk with someone about spiritual matters, I think it would be really good to consider the approach and the transition that Jesus made here in his conversation with the woman of the well. He literally said to her, you worship what you do not know. See, this is how Jesus extended his conversation with the woman at the well. It's an important statement to consider. The woman had just made what she probably thought was a very tolerant comment about equal validity between the Jewish and the Samaritan religious practices. She said, when she said in here, our fathers worshiped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Well, let's fast forward 20, 21 centuries and and think about the responses that people give today when Christ comes into a conversation. People, people may say that spirituality is very important, but asking what they mean by that brings uh, a focus on tolerance. Uh, for, well, they say, well, you think, you, well, I think you should have spiritual feelings and spirituality should be a part of life in... Um, Oh, in whatever way it's meaningful to you. But whatever way is meaningful is not biblical worship. It's not even serious thinking about God. Jesus would rightly say to many today what he said to the woman, you worship what you do not know. You see, no one enters into a random relationship of worship with God. Christ, his gentle rebuke here, is actually a universal rebuke. You can't pick and choose the parts of the Bible you want. You can't craft God in your own image and say, well, uh, this is the God that I want, and a God of, that's all loving, no justice, all convenient, no conviction. If you try, you'll end up with something else. So true worship requires understanding. It requires understanding that there's a real God. He wrote a book, and he has a son, and you can worship him, if you do the second thing that Jesus told this woman, he said to her, we worship what we know for his salvation is from the Jews. So think about that. Personal knowledge is where worship <clears throat> has to begin. It flows out of a relationship with Jesus Christ. When Jesus said salvation is from the Jews in this passage, he was referring to the Old Testament record of God's plan. All the promises that were given to Abraham, the first five books of the Bible given to Moses, and, and Christ himself being the, the long-promised Messiah. These were all Jewish inheritance. So Jesus could rightly make, rightly make this claim, the salvation claim. And then true salvation leads to true worship. It's the forgiveness of sins. It's being rescued from the road to hell. It's being able to enjoy the gift of of God, which is eternal life. Where he said in John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. You see, trusting God 
and in Jesus Christ alone for your salvation is the most important decision you'll ever make. And there's no authentic worship apart from that decision. Without that decision, you worship what you do not know. You see, we worship what we know, and it starts with a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. That's the beginning of worshiping someone you know. I trust that you have come to faith in Christ, and if not, that you will trust him for your salvation. And then you will enjoy the peace and the joy and the comfort that comes from knowing him and a desire to worship and honor and adore your Heavenly Father. And then you can say, I worship what I do know. Father, thank you for today, for giving us many examples in your word of how we can respond to those who have a general understanding of spirituality, so to speak, but you've given us in your word um, the truth that can give us a distinct understanding of what it means to have faith, to be spiritually minded because of Jesus Christ, and to be able to worship in spirit and in truth, worship what we do know. Thank you for this week, for this day, for the opportunities that will be ours yet. I pray that you'll use us for your glory and you'll be pleased with us, your servants. In Jesus' name, amen.